The Toyota Supra is a liftback sports coupe that became a JDM icon. The most notable example was the Mark IV, which ran from 1993 to 2002. What if there was a true successor to the 4th gen model of this car? Which the Supra nowadays is basically a mix between BMW and Toyota. For this build, it'll be a pure blood Toyota with a next generation JZ engine. Hey guys, it's Therese here and let's get on with our build. So for the panel material, I guess the pretty much the usual, like pretty much 70% of my builds, especially for this time period, we'll probably choose the partial aluminum panel material with a monocoque chassis, I guess made of age steel for chassis material. And of course, it'll be a front longitudinal with the front suspension, I guess keep it consistent with the Mark IV, a McPherson strut front suspension with a multi-link in the rear end. For the engine, like I said I did there, kind of like for the engine zoom in. So instead of being engine family name, Family 48, like I said, it's a next generation JZ engine, which would be called 3JZ. That's an X. The 3JZ GTE, which is the turbocharged model. So for the engine, it'll be, of course, an inline six. Made a cast iron with the Born Stroke, keep it as is like the 2JZ to 86 millimeters for the Born Stroke to get the engine size remaining as is to 3 liters or 2,997 cubic centimeters. And it'll be a dual red cam 4 valves per cylinder made out of aluminum. I guess for the crank car rods and pistons, we'll probably do forged everything, so forged steel, forged lightweight car rods, and forged heavy. I hope it's gonna be the best like combination getting the high RPM for the compression everything else in general. I guess put it down to an 8.5 like the real life 2JZ GTE. And VVT, I know they use VVT, it's called VVT-I, which is variable valve, uh, variable valve timing. Yeah, it's variable valve timing with intelligence. But I know the VVT-I uses only for the intake for one of my sources that I did check out. So let's choose VVT the intake, not at all cams. And there's some engines that also use variable valve lift incorporated with the VVTi. For the RPM limit, let's just do 7,500 RPM. And of course, turbo charges, twin turbo this, and I might do a smart boost system to reduce the turbo lag, and probably best with sliders and all that stuff, and probably drop the boost limit too, like once we actually build the engine, see what's up with it. For the fuel system, direct, uh, not direct, a multi-point electronic fuel injector with a single throttle setup with, it's uh, a variable intake because Toyota started to use variable type of intake manifolds right around the 90s and 2000s on some of their cars, including somewhat nowadays. And the fuel type, go all out, super fuel, which is 93 AKI, and lastly for the exhaust headers and the exhaust in general, so turbo mid, and the exhaust diameter be 2.5 inches to make up for the lost power because of it being turbocharged with high flow straight through and straight through. That's a lot of horsepower and a lot of drop off. Damn. And we got some car rods and valve float and everything problem with the engine. So let me do the tune real quick. So seeing that we got a torque problem just starting off right off the bat is it's set to 388 pounds feet of torque and we're at about 386 as of right now. So I guess a regular forged comrades will have to do, but oh, we have to drop the RPM a little bit despite upping up the quality and everything. And seeing we got a big ass turbocharger, 80 millimeters for the exducer, which is the compressor, and the turbine about 80 millimeters, also 79.8 for the inducer. I did see that there were a handful of Toyota Supras, the two JZs, were like in the 50s and 60s for the the exducer as well as dropping the inducer quite a bit. So we drop off with some horsepower and look at the torque right here. It looks pretty consistent for the next couple of thousand RPM before we drop off at around 5,000 and really drop off at redline. So after getting the final tune right here, I'll call this engine final by bringing up the turbocharger spool up at around 2,100 RPM and all that good stuff. So we got the horsepower rating right here to 387 horsepower at 6,700 RPM and the torque at 367 pounds feet of torque at 4,600 RPM. So it's kind of funny right here with the difference between the horsepower and torque because we got a difference of 20. Quite an interesting build to say the least. <laughs> So right here, let's see how this next generation 3JZ sounds like right here by doing a pull test. So 
So first of all, variable valve lift not active, so I seen this light come on, but second of all, ignoring that, just like the 2JZ, definitely sounds like a badass Toyota Bade inline 6 engine. And for the VVL light, let me investigate this, so I'll do a pull test again. Alright, VVL is not active. Once it gets up to 5000 RPM where it should kick in. So basically, I just made VTEC. I made Honda's VTEC at 5000 RPM where it really kicks in, as you heard right there. So for the drive type of this body here, a wannabe Nissan 350Z, because unfortunately with the bodies in automation, this is pretty much the best liftback body that is in automation as of right now, which is a modded body, where there are not a whole lot of good liftback bodies where this whole back end lifts up like the Supra does. And even too, being within like 2.6-ish, 5-7 meter wheelbase is like around here. This is the best body there is out there, especially for this time period, so we're just making a wannabe 350Z, but in reality, it's a Toyota. So drive type, rear wheel drive, manual 6-speed with the top speed set, 180 for now. I mean, probably automation to do some shenanigans by doing a little bit more, probably. Probably make this thing like 200 miles an hour or something stupid, who knows what the game is probably going to make me set it to. So for the tires, do some radio, regular radial sports compound tires. And they're not going to be even 235s. So let's see how the backs are like. Maybe put like 255s? Yeah, 255s in the back. And for the front, they're poking out maybe 225s. I'll probably flex out the body a little bit more, maybe. I'll probably do that. For the brakes, so starting with the front disc brake, let's do a Venedisc 4 piston with the size. Let's do 310 up front and a Venedisc 2 piston. 270s in the back. And of course, drop the brake force because. The game's gonna yell at me saying it's way too powerful, uh, lower it, or reduce the brake size or something stupid. Under tray, I guess flow optimize. Maybe I'll deal with a sport under tray, but one of these two will work out. And for the interior, of course, it's a two-seater up in here with a sport interior, sport type of interior, and I guess a premium CD player. Driver safety aids will be... A variable hydraulic power steering with just ABS brakes only, with advanced safety standards, I guess. And for lastly, for suspension, uh, let's do progressive springs, adaptive dampers, semi-active sway bars, starting up with a sport preset. So not too shabby with the slow steering graph here at 99.4%, like almost at the oversteering level, and drivability a smidge above understeering. Not too bad. Not too bad. And also not too bad, look at the fuel economy, 21.3 miles per gallon just starting off, that's excellent. And like I do, with the freaking brakes, it is going to be too strong, so no brake fade whatsoever. Good 45 there, and perfect with the front brakes. Front brakes are perfect, rear just drop the brake force a little. And I'll make some final adjustments before I design the car. Alright, so for the vehicle in general, before designing design this, so for the gearing setup here... I did batch up a Bark Force gear ratios for a 6-speed manual to Supra by trying to match the final drive ratio in all 6 gears, all of their gear ratios respectively, to drop down to 0-62 to according to game of 5.1 seconds instead of showing like 5.7, 5.8 or something like that before. So anyways, let's do a time lapse of B trying to recreate the design from my concept design that I did a couple days ago. So it'll be just me customizing the exterior of this car, and then after that, we'll jump on over to Beam and G Drive. So anyways, let's commence this here time-lapse, right now. So for the design of this car, it took me about a day to create it off-camera. After that concept design was done, I shared this community post asking you guys on what kind of car this is. And yes, that is a Supra, hence the is that a asterisk and that on the back. For the front, I modernized the headlights by adding these D-shaped headlights while retaining the circular light bulbs. Then, I added a large grille with side vents and inserted some plastic bars inside the main grille and a skinny turn indicator on the side vents, including this large front lip for extra downforce. For the hood, I decided to loosely replicate the Toyota Silica by adding this hood scoop and some body molding to direct air to the scoop to increase engine cooling. For the sides, I kept the door-mounted vents from the old Supra used to cool the brakes. 
On top of doing that, I had to use some door seam fixtures to cut into the vent, seeing as it takes place on the car's door. After doing that, I slapped on a pair of side skirts to improve downforce. For the back, seeing that there aren't a whole lot of good wings for this car, I chose this wannabe Subaru WRX STI type of wing that's shorter than the real counterpart. For the taillights, I used some negative dog tape to cut into the body and create some custom lights. First, I used some angled patches and 3D fixtures to make up the housing for the taillights. Next, I placed a basic turn signal on the sides, then I added the circular brake lights and reverse lights similar to the Mark IV Supra. Also with the rear, I decided to add this third brake light located on the rear window similar to the Toyota Silica. I guess I'm just riding that car, eh? <laughs> Whatever. I capped off the rear end by adding this rear diffuser, which I've modified to make it similar to the Twin Z design with these four fins and a vent in the back. Finally, I repainted the car to the Alpine silver metallic paint color and blacked out the rims and brake calipers. So after getting everything done with this build, here's how it came out. This is the 2003 Toyota Supra RZ. This hypothetical 5th gen Supra is 100% Toyota made, not like the current one where it's half BMW and half Toyota. Anyways, will this A90 Supra be the perfect successor to the previous A80 version? We'll find out soon when I drive it in BMG. So after completing this year design, the Toyota Supra RZ, the 5th gen model, despite these problems we got here, just these three, such as the front and rear dampers being too hard and the rear tires are quite wide for the chosen tire compound, let's hop on over to BMG Drive to see how this 5th gen Supra drives. So here we are at the map of West Coast USA with the A90 Supra completely spawned up in here with some New York license plates even though it takes place in the West Coast of the United States. But anyways, ignoring that, let's start our base performance test with this car starting with the 0-62 to acceleration test followed by the 62-0 to brake test and lastly, a top speed run if this car can reach its top speed with the custom gear ratios. So let's start off by accelerating this bad boy in 3, 2, 1, Go! First gear we go. A little bit premature upshift. 0 to 62 in 5.83 seconds of 267.80 feet. So for the brake test, let's start it right here. So 62, now it's 61. 62, brake. On the way, 62 to 0 in 3.11 seconds of 130.80 feet. I'd say. Distance-wise and time-wise seems very legitimate. I think they're like 310, I think I upped it up a little bit, like 320 millimeter brakes up front and 270s in the back. So, fairly realistic of both time and distance. So, for a top speed run in effect, still under 6 seconds. I believe the real-life Toyota Supra, the Mark IV, had a 0 to 60, or 0 to 62, in like 4.5 seconds, under 5 seconds. It was between four and a half to five seconds, but with this build, it's over five seconds, borderline six seconds. The police are on my ass. What? I didn't spawn police with the traffic, so fifth gear we go into sixth gear. 160 plus miles an hour. There is no way we're going to reach top speed. No way, Jose. So the best speed we're going to get through this stretch of road, 175. If we had more room, then that would be great. So 50 times slow-mo, overlapping crash into the gantry. There goes our two tires. The headlights are still intact. There goes part of suspension. Speed up a little. Mm, go. Full time. And we killed the engine because, well, we hit it dead on in this gantry where it says San Amaro, stay here, or Mojave Road East, go there. So look at the car. Some extreme front end damage, of course, and the back end. We got rid of the license plate, but not a whole lot of damage in the back end, of course. So let's stay in this map here and see if I can initiate a drag race with a Toyota Supra mod. Oh, it's right over here. A Toyota Supra mod where I can do a drag race against my Supra versus a modded Toyota Supra that is accurate to spec and everything. So the model in particular is a classic mod that is like one of the most popular car mods in BMG is the Hirochi Prasu. This is the Prasu Sport with a manual transmission like this here, A90 Supra that they made in automation. So here we are on a grid marker, and go. 
Damn, he was lagging behind or something like that. <laughs> Better wake up, dude. I'll probably start that again because that dude was just sleeping at the damn drag strip. So, 160, 117 miles an hour is 12.6 seconds, roughly. Slow down. That's new. Normally, you don't have to slow down. You just keep going and going. It just shows you the stats like this. Bitch, what? I lost? Hold up. I had a 12.6. I... I crossed the line first, you crossed last. So we got a 12.4 and 114, while it was 117. What the hell? It wasn't this bad at the grid map version, grid map version 2 version of the drag race, so let's do this again. If not, I'll just go to grid map and get a more accurate result of this. See? He sleeps. I think this is probably bugged out with this map here. I'll probably go to grid map version 2 if this... I'll probably buy a bitch have to if it persists like that. Now I won. 12.2, 12.3. Uh, let's go to grid map and get a more accurate result. So here's the grid map version 2 drag race. So here we go, we got the stage lights on. Stand by for the Supra to get its... So get itself in the mix. So both stage lights are on. Perfect ass launch. Again, just lags right there. It didn't even do that before I, I recorded. What the hell? So right here, it is 21 seconds at first and third place. This is what I did before recording this video with that same car to uh, pursue. So about a 12.5 second time, 12.05 second time, 118 miles per hour versus the Supra Mark IV to pursue 12.488 of 114 miles an hour. So, the A90 Supra is a tad better than the A80, the old one. So let's exit out of here and do a time trial run. So here we are at the Sukuba circuit, and we'll be doing only two laps with a rolling start with the A90 Supra only. So let's get ready to things to start things off here, and ready, go. Sick ass wheel spin, keep that under control, and do the drift, sir. So into our first braking corner, hard on the brakes, and hard to paint like I am with Waka Flocka Flame and me being a dumbass and not driving this car well. Alright, here we go. First corner we go. Little bit of a snap over steer. God damn. And also, I can't get enough of how quiet this car sounds. It being like, it's just pretty much like a buffled, like, run-a-mill, like, 2JZ GE. Like, the non-turbocharged model of this engine and this car and everything. But seeing that this is the sport model, the RZ version, you'd expect that the GTE model, this 3JZ, would do much better and much sounds like, like, sound a lot louder than what it is right now. Yo, oh my god, do the drift, son! Do the drift, son! Do the drift, son! <laughs> nice! <laughs> I can't believe I, I held that line and did a successful drift at that final corner. So I wouldn't really say that this is much of a snap oversteer problem. I mean, there's a little bit of snap oversteer, but there is that power oversteer. Like, once you hit on the gas pedal and go in the corner, that's where you start to lose traction to back it because of lack of traction control. Thus, break attraction and use sliding out of control. And here we go, final lap, final corner, and we get to a 1 minute, 17 seconds, 753 milliseconds, which puts us in dead last because I think these are the Beowulf cars, aren't they? Yeah, the Beowulf Cordova and the Cypress. Yes, these two cars are my most powerful cars, but the Cypress is the most powerful car in version 4.2, the previous version of automation, of over 17,000 horsepower, and the Beowulf Cordova was like 14,500. But ignoring those two, we got a 2 minutes, 34 seconds, 107 milliseconds. So let's go to free roam, and slightly crash this car out. In the most depressing fashion, because I was already slowing down to begin with. So, pretty mediocre run all in general because of the handling this car, and me trying to get used to how the car handles with the minor snap oversteer, and the old on power oversteer. So for the final part of the video, let's go to main menu, free roam, and drop this bad boy down. Drop it off to the good old leap of death, where we just drive up a ramp and down the pond to basically trash this car. So let's go up to the top of the ramp right now. So here we are at the top, accelerate we go, first skier, back to my wheel spin. And I swear if we get a 0-62, a little bit of a bottom out. 
60 miles an hour, just shy of exactly 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour to get a 0 to 62 before getting to the end of the ramp and launch ourselves down here. So we're about to base drop at 237 miles an hour, probably a little bit more. What would it be like hitting it roof first at this speed? So here we go, collision on our roof. Flatten the damn car, and I swear if we like sit right here after this hit, so increase the speed. I guess go to regular camera and full time. Yo, <laughs> that is a first that has ever happened. Just base drop like right here where the little is this my lip or something? Oh, it's my side skirts. Just base drop where the side skirts are at, and just probably travel like. 50 feet and come to a rest. No, 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 that ain't happening. Maximize and... Much better. This will probably get to the bottom of the cliff face, the entire cliff, where we can just splash ourselves down to this pond. Let's see. Just full time all the way. And... Nope. Just one hit. And splash. Engine is hydrolocking. Our uh, rear right tire is deflated. Who even cares? So bring us to some flat land and look at the aftermath destruction of destroying this vehicle. So here we are. The car is at a rest and it has flattened into literally a piece of paper. Looking at the car, just, just looking at it, we got the brake lights. They're still working. Turn signals, they still work. The reverse lights, they work too. Are you kidding me? Well, at least this tire's intact, and the engine... Well, we still got the intercooler, part of the turbocharger, the intake, the heads, the word twin turbo still legible. <laughs> Basically, just turn this engine to like a two and a half dimension type of object instead of a run-the-mill 3D object, so... <laughs> yeah. This car, this engine, this everything is pretty much like you find at a stereotypical like junkyard or scrapyard. Basically what this is in this condition. So with the Toyota Supra, the A90 version, with its next generation 3JZ engine making about 17% more power than the old 2JZ, it's definitely a great upgrade due to it having more power, torque, and fuel economy. With how the car performed, it was a downer that the 0 to 62 times were worse than the real Mark IV Supra. It's probably due to the gearing setup or how there's some brief turbo lag at around 2100 RPM. Not only that, it can beat the Mark IV Supra on a drag strip as it has a better quarter mile time and speed. I would say that this is a great next gen model to the A80 version. So anyways, that'll do it with automation and BMG Drive. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.